just so lovely to see you, you know? Yeah. yeah. And hug her and be around with her. That was such a pleasure. changed everything. Yeah. I saw that every, I saw that how I view the world is creating the world. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I must see it with love. Yeah. How was it for you, Rach? I just had a thing today, like, that <coughs> happened in my mind. Yeah. That was really exciting. Um, and Samantha knows because she lives with me, but um, the three other girls we live with are really messy, and you know, I have like a huge mm-hmm. issue with it, like it drives me crazy. It's your addiction. Right. Yeah. But, well, <laughs> well, sort of, sort of, yeah. Well, of course. But um, <laughs> as I was like cleaning the house today, um, I just was kind of like thinking of it as if it was a mess I had left. And that made it, I was going to tell you this, but we were like whispering outside, but I think it's good to share it here. And so I just was kind of going around like laughing at it because I had left it. Oh, that's great. That so, brilliant. Yeah. Doesn't that change the world? Yeah. Yeah. And it's still not 100%, but it started. That's, so, yeah. yeah. That changes the world. Yeah. yeah. Do you know that yesterday I was taking my girls, I found out actually afterwards, after practicing with Gisha, that um, a good friend had died. Mm-hmm. And that further, and he was one of the most beautiful, full of love men, you know, and, and I know he's, he's good, you know. But I was taking my girls, I'm like, we need to go get pedicures. <laughs> <laughs> so we're driving around and I'm like, okay, can somebody manifest a parking spot? And Juliet, my youngest, she goes, I am a parking spot. And I was like, that's what he was just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I am a parking spot. Paul, how was it for you? Because you were so also doing sound and preparation. Yeah, it's, but it, um, it's, it's always good to hear how, to, for me, at least kind of deal with people like what Rachel was saying. You know, go to someone and say, will you help me with my problem rather yeah. than say, you're your problem. <laughs> you're, I, yeah. I need to help you, you know. It's yeah. just a great way to approach those kind of issues, especially, as, like I said, especially for me who has a problem finding a way into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I like to hear that. It was lovely. Stephen? Because you were like so busy and. Uh, it was so boring. Wait for it you know what we're talking about, Samantha? The lecture? Yeah, the, the teachings. Yeah, she came to Oh, you came? Oh, yeah. great, great. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, it was great. It was amazing. Um, like, uh, yeah, I was, I was very <coughs> busy. Yeah. How do I feel right now? How did you feel through it? Um, yeah. I changed. I like, was mm-hmm. super hyper the first night. The second yeah. night, I was like tense and tight. And then the third night, I was ill. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know. It's been like a drastic shift but I got some good advice out of it and then, but besides that like actually serving the whole event was really nice yeah. and everybody that worked and did something was it was magical like it, it really was yeah I had like a bunch of together. hot girls working at the table <laughs> <laughs> Steve picked all the hot girls for the oh, I know registration. I know oh, I know. And, and I liked how I was one of the bodyguards, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he picked the hot girls for the bodyguards as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, yeah. it, you know, it felt like um, when after when we were studying the um, the Diamond Sutras, yes. and shit got wacky and weird, yeah. Yeah. really. And yeah. then I was aware that that was about to happen. You know, like that stuff could happen. Yeah. I talked with Paul about this, and he's like, "You got to be really careful." I was like, "I know." Yeah. But then really, just like, just what is that about? Mm. <laughs> what is that about? Mm -hmm. What the? So I thought, what was it like? Had you been to something like that before? Um, no, not really. Was it weird? It was beautiful. I was really happy to go. Good. Definitely taking a look at some of my additions. What was it? Hear your insight on how we should go about our Yeah, it was great. I love it. Yeah, good. Yeah, I felt. Uh, hi. How, how did you feel through the event? I'm just getting feedback about what you were. You know, everyone's smiling at each other, but there's all these things happening internally for everybody, and you never get to see them. So I thought, since we're an intimate group, we can talk about it while it's being broadcast on the internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was there for Monday, yeah, and I had a conflict Tuesday and Wednesday. Right. So, but for that day, uh, I'm going I want to eventually see the DVD or see where because I, I don't know where it went, but I wanted to see how it all tied together. Okay. So I just kind of saw that introduction. I felt really uh, disjointed on Monday. I felt like nobody could help me get out of a view that everything was going to turn to shit quickly, and that the school was a bit like I just you caught, were caught up in the project. Yeah, I was completely That's caught up in the doing, <clears throat> and I I was trying to listen to the words and I was trying to be present, and the, my mind was like this is happening, that is happening. There was no dragging me out of that state of mind on Monday, completely shifted on Tuesday, and got even better on Wednesday, got completely magical for me yeah, on magic. the third day. And the second day was just brilliant as well, it was like a pop, it was like the squeezing of the pimple happened on Monday, and you shot with, <laughs> oh my god, and then the head of the pimple just over on Tuesday, and it was like, ta-da! <laughs> And someone had to clean it up. <laughs> and by the way, I've, I've worked shows all my life, big shows. You did a great job. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ricky. It was, no, it was you guys. Like, I, I, I just tried to make sure everybody well, that's, communicated. That's, that's what that job is. It's yeah. putting the right people in the right spot and letting them do what they do. Yeah, and everybody did perfectly. Yeah. You know, because we were. I, I thought it went really, I mean, and I've been involved in, I don't know, five or six of these now. And I think yeah. it went really well this year. Nice. Well, yeah, Geshe-la said the same. Yeah, I went to say because I couldn't help set up, and but I I heard how we were planning it together, you know, from the Thursday before, mm -hmm. and I noticed that when I arrived on Monday, and actually all the evening, the way that things started and yeah, fifteen was, minutes to set up and boom, done. It was like a mm -hmm. kind of quiet, mm -hmm. the way it happened. Like I couldn't notice at all that good. anyone was setting up. It was great. So, oh, that's nice. Kudos. It made me think about. <coughs> what we're learning and what we're talking about, you know, and what Geshe touched on as well, which is the realms of existence, because it's a weird topic to teach, you know. Like you said, nobody likes teaching this chapter of the Abhidharma because it's got all these fantastic or bizarre things that you can't confirm, and I can't confirm, and have direct experience of hell realms and ghost realms and so on, form realms, formless realms. You know, I can imagine what it would be like. I can believe that some people have had an um, experience similar to that and then gave that experience a name. Yeah. But it was so interesting for me because going through, I, I got a glimpse of, even within our human existence, there was no pulling me out. No matter what nice thing you were saying to me or anything on the Monday, my, my dealing, and I've got to practice on dealing with afflictions to say, come, that thing was on. Mm. And there was no getting through that wall. And you could tell me, this is a beautiful flower, Hector. And all I could see is it's about to fall over and someone's going to crack onto it. Or, you know, there was nothing that you could inform me. I could, I could tell, and I went to bed that way, that would release me from that grip of seeing and experiencing the world. And it was like I was swimming in mm -hmm. it. Yeah? But through here and here, I could tell that other people were in other spaces and I remembered vaguely what that is like but there's no way you could I could feel it there was no way like I said it changed 
to, to a different thing on the Tuesday and Wednesday, which was magical and beautiful, and there was no way that Hector from Monday could force me out of that experience. You know, th mm -hmm. like, I, like I remembered what it felt like on Monday, and I wasn't there, and it was the same room, and it was the same people. Yeah. But what I find really interesting is, like, because I've done, I mean, you know that I've had extreme heartbreak recently and traveled out of that, and, and when I always come back to this, this kind of equanimity and wisdom and, and seeing, really seeing my compassion for other suffering is just like exponential to the point where I see somebody, I mean this happened today, seeing homeless people in the tunnel on the subway and I just start crying. But it flows through me, it doesn't change me, you know? Like I can experience their suffering and, but it doesn't, it's, a, it's you know what I mean? There's such an expansiveness that it passes through. And it doesn't become mine, but I can see it and Meaning witness it. Meaning you're embodied it. in it or something. Something Meaning like you're not embodied in it. Or right. Okay. Okay. But do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're the opposite sides of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When we're so stuck in the afflictions, we can't. Mm -hmm. And then when we and break out of it, them, you can see it as a separate thing. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I like what Rachel said. Someone taught me that once. I've been practicing trying, I'm a hard-headed practitioner, but I try and make things work, you know. And then someone just said that to me, that they were visiting, they had left their place for somebody that was visiting to use, and then they went back after four weeks or something oh, to open their house after their guests had left and used it, and their place was an absolute mess and disgusting and dirty and dishes in the sink. They said that their first impulse for the first time ever was, oh my God, I must have done this to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of, you stupid bastards, I hate you. Yeah? Which is, like if you think of karma, the, the, that instant of response, <coughs> of taking complete responsibility for your state of awareness, mm -hmm. changes the way you then are in the world, which then changes the way you are. Right. Yeah. And the more you habituate that, the, then it becomes uncontrived. It begins contrived, and then at some point you like you have an epiphany, and you go, "This is." And you have to study, right, the karma and emptiness thing, and understand <coughs> it, and convince it, because that's not how things appear, and see it through logic and try and test it and. Um, and then one day you have an experience that confirms something that's way bigger than the little narrow thinking that we have about it. Right. You know? So I just want to get people's insight on it. Um, thank you for sharing. I want to overview whether we learned anything in class one and two. And I don't know why. So, what root text are we studying for? Death in the realms. What root text are we studying for death in the realms? I'm going to do this like a normal class now. Huh? Good. Abhidharma. What? What's Abhidharma mean? Abhidharma Kosha. The treasure house of higher knowledge. The treasure house of higher knowledge is yeah. Kosha is what word of that? What's Kosha? What's Abhidharma? Abhi. Dharma. Abhi is? Well, dharma is knowledge. Dharma is knowledge. Dharma is high knowledge, right? Yeah. And so kosha must be? So Trisha has. <laughs> Trisha has. And who wrote that? That's about who are around about? What? Around Three, what time? 350 AD. 350 AD. Yeah. What, what did you say? Uh, it was about 800 years off, so oh. <laughs> trying to <laughs> memorize. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations for your text, is that. But from that, and it's available and I've got an iPad, and it's worth reading, because if you study some of these things, you go and read that, and you understand how many people can make up stuff upon reading that. But if you didn't have the commentaries from masters all the way back, you wouldn't know what it was referring to, right? So we need a commentary, and who's the... What's the name of the commentary that's actually where we're pulling out all the study of the realms? 
illumination of the uh, path to freedom? Good, good, yeah. And by who? The first Dalai Lama. Great. Do you remember his name? Who? Yeah. Nice. But he wasn't the Dalai Lama. When he passed, right? Right. No, he became that later. I think the third was the first. Did we do that right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that you can't see the answers. Yeah. Are, are they visible? No. no. Good. That's the idea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Make them in grey so it's grey enough so you don't see them. So, so if I press the button by mistake and it comes up, I can see it because it's grey here and I click. <laughs> but you can't see it because this is a crappy projector. So you don't cheat. Uh, so yeah, illumination on the path to freedom by the first Dalai Lama. Who was his teacher? Jason. 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 Don't know. Oh, 13, 91, 14, 74. So you can read it, okay. Well, Great. let's pick it up super fast. So let's talk about uh, realms of existence, if you could group them into three major categories. Desire, form, formless. Great, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're not competitive at all. Desire. <laughs> 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 Desire for a performance. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the Tibetan names for it? Let's have a look if you put them up there. You can cheat. Can you yeah. just make notes? Dukam. Dukam. Yeah. Sukam and Sopnekam. So I, I remember the Dukam because in the Pali version right. they say Dukkha for right. suffering. Right. right? So and I suka. remember suffering. Us. Uh, yeah, you know, so I think Desire and Dukkha. Uh -huh. And then Sukkam is form, and then is it Sukme? Sukme yeah. Kam is formless. Right, and yeah. Sukha is ease. Is? Ease. Ease. Okay. So let's talk about the characteristics. I, I gave you characteristics, quality, and a division of those realms, right? So what characterizes a desire realm? Things driven by desire. Excellent. The first Dalai Lama said, uh, what kind of desire? Food and sex. Yeah, so we're predominantly driven by the size of the senses, right? We're like these gross bodies driven by the senses. Food and sex being the predominant thing of all the beings. What is the quality of being in that? So quality is sort of the wrong word to describe why it's a shitty place. You know, it's it's like you're in this soup, like I was explaining that I couldn't get out of on Monday. You're in this state of perceiving the world and no one knocking at the windows is saying, can get through. But me talking to a dog and saying, this is a pen, there's no getting through. Yeah. So in the desire realm, we're characterized by being driven by desires of the senses, predominantly food and sex, but also all these other explanations. But the quality of being in there, why it's a desire, why it's a suffering realm. Do you remember what that is? Something about the people and objects, like the beings in it and the objects in that realm are cause for something. Rebirth. Now everything in those three realms is rebirth. So all those three realms are samsara. Right. Oh, speaking of the end? No, all those three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and oh, wait. They are objects. So the with, beings and the objects in it are, yeah. With, um, with which non virtues or mental afflictions can develop through struggle. Great, excellent. So do you remember that? that be, because we're driven, like impulsive, towards objects mm -hmm. of the senses, us and animals and all the other five realms, yeah, that Geshe talked about. We will compromise our. Karma for the sake of we struggle with each other, and therefore oh, right. the drive for that dis for that desirable object, or to get away from that non-desirable object, creates no that non-virtues. We we prepare to compromise, do things that harm, yeah, and we even make them acceptable and sometimes make them legal, mm -hmm. yeah, in order to get those things because we un misunderstand the nature of being. So it's the gross level of that is the desire. 
Yeah. So the, I'm saying gross level because then you've got the form realm and the formless realm, which are more subtle, but just as she. Yeah. And so I can't remember. I think it was the first Dalai Lama who said that it doesn't matter if you're in the lowest of the lowest hells, hung upside down over a vat of rolling oil, or in the uh, Okmin, the highest of the of the uh, formless realm. Yeah. You're still in the suffering. You're still in samsara. I mean, at some point you're going to be all of it. So it's not like you're any better here or there mm -hmm. in terms of being stuck. You're stuck. They, they, then I don't know if you've seen it. Then the, the idea is that there is a place amongst that spectrum where you have enough balance of hurt and freedom mm -hmm. from hurt where you can realize this and see it through logic, cognition, and that's the human realm. Right? Within the which of those three realms is a human realm? The desire of just checking, right? And then, um, so the beings and the objects in the desire realm are cause for non virtue, yeah? We plant things in our stream of consciousness that then force us to see and experience more of that stuff we plant, okay? Um, and then there were 20 divisions of beings in that realm. Even though there are five groups of beings, you can divide them into 20 divisions. So they were divided in 20 divisions in the commentary. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, there's like groups of eight. There's a group of eight. Um, there's a group of four. <coughs> so do you remember the realms in the in the wheel of life in the Bhava Chakra? Yeah. You have the, what are the five realms or six realms? Yeah. Human, Kratos, which is hungry ghosts. The devas and the suras, animal, and hell realms. Yeah. So you have five, and if you divide the devas and the suras, gods and demigods, you have two. Right? So this is just one grouping, but you can look at that group of experiences and say within those there are twenty. Yeah. You can subdivide those into twenty. Do you remember that division that's in there? Eight hell, eight hot hell. Great. No, good, good. So there's eight hot hells and eight cold hells, but because they are mirror of each other, they, they call them eight. eight. Yeah. yeah. One crater. One crater, which is a hungry, hungry ghost. Hungry ghost. What is realms? Huh? Realms. Realms. Divisions types of, of types realms. Of types of beings. Being. Yeah, they're saying. Within um, the sun. So when you say hell, you, you mean hell, hell beings. Yeah. Okay. But also. Hells, like, they yeah, like, uh, like planets, if you like, you know, like how I many human planets. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, I liked what you said last class about the flag and the cup of coffee. Right. <laughs> right. Like yeah. Coffee. yeah, I think Geshe touched on it <coughs> at the Wheel of Life teaching when he said there is a space. You could have an hell on earth, a temporary hell, and that was also in the Abhidharma. Oh, yeah. He gave it a name, I can't remember. It was, it was a hell on earth something, right? Yeah, I read it. Yeah. So give me the 20 divisions. Let's have a look. We've got eight hells, one preta, one animal, four human beings, and six pleasure beings. That works. Good. I don't know much more about that other than you could subdivide and subdivide and subdivide until you get an infinite number of one per being of existence because in, in reality each is their own world. But you could see how these worlds vacillate, like we vacillate against the animal realm and rarely do we really share true perception of objects and experiences, you know? Um, and so this is just a an enlightened view of the broader system of beings, if you like, that's found in the Abhidharma Koja. So let's see if we got that right. Can you see that? Not quite. Eight hells, one preta, one animal. Four humans, eight pleasure <coughs> realms. Good. So let's talk about the form realm. Um, what characterized the form realm? We're just revising class one and two. We said that in the desire on beings were driven by desire predominantly for food and sex. 
but what's the, the characteristic of the formula? This was a little... You know, I wrote down physical matter reaches the peak. That's its quality. Right. Yeah? That's why it's called the form realm. Because the form, the, the way form evolves, if you like, the highest way that form can express itself is in, in the form realm. Beyond that, you go beyond form right. and, ha and have purely a mind. And then I have subtleness of mind and attachment to qualities. Great. So it, similarly to the desire realm, where we are driven and fight each other for the things we desire, they just they are just beyond the desire. They are beyond that realm. That's what characterizes them. So it's an absence of this realm. Yeah, that's what characterizes beings. But they still have mental afflictions about no. more subtle states. No. Yeah. Mhm. Mm attachment. Great, excellent, cool. And there were 17 sections with four levels. So four <coughs> levels and 17 <laughs> sections. Let's see if you remember those. And the reason I'm asking you to remember those is because they come to be, so I, I can't imagine them in any other way than trying to put a physical elevator kind of building level, you know, which is not the way... It is. It's a sense of being, like I was describing, mm -hmm. Monday versus Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of being, animal versus human. It's that kind of existence. But I can only imagine these things because I'm thick, like an elevate, like a building with all these levels, right? Because when you say level, that's what, that's what pops up. So within four levels, four divisions within that form realm, level one in the form realm, level two, oh, etc. Go on. I, I didn't remember they each had three levels and then the Excellent, level. good. So the deep, very deep, and extremely deep. So I don't the the, the first three right. had three divisions. Thank you. And, and the, the last one had eight. eight. Yeah. Can good. Can we perceive this realm? Like, yeah. Can I guess? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can't. Yeah, if you go to very subtle levels of meditation. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not like I'm walking down the street and I see that the peak has formed. Unless I'm having like a well, transcendent experience. Unless you. Uh, had an experience and I've no the beings can can do this either in meditation and then when they pull out of meditation carry on that perception right? you can start to see and them you, at the same time and you can mistake that for what? being enlightened or, or or the rest which is one of the mistakes of skipping past the first level of the form realm right so it's it's a useful platform. It's the only platform, according to the scriptures, where you can see emptiness directly, is the first level of the form realm, which is not very deep. Yeah? So deep, very deep, extremely mm -hmm. deep, right? So it's a deep level of meditation where in, in this realm, in the desire realm, we, we are so focused and so practiced at meditating that your mind can enter that subtle state of being, first level of the form realm. Yeah? Your mind enters there. You say it's not very deep, but I don't I know. Have to argue that. In comparison to the 17 levels, I'm saying. Yeah. So out of the things you can, you can go deeper. I'm saying you can go second level of the form realm, third level of the form realm, the eight divisions of the fourth level of the form realm, and then you can have meditations like uh, where were the the four types of meditation that gave you a result in the formless realm, right? So I'm saying in comparison to all those. Meditation is not very deep because you can reach deeper and deeper. But for us, it's extremely deep. You know, it's deep. Uh, it's but it's possible and doable. You just have to have the conditions. For basically, you need to be human to enter that state of being. Yeah, in meditation. So what I'm saying in relation to all the places you could shoot, it's the first level of the formula. Yes, you need to go through the nine stages of meditation and so on. But in relation to that, it's very So the 17 divisions were, you just gave it to me, right? So deep, very deep, extremely deep. But that's just the first. For the first three. Four, well, that would, right. That gives you nine. Okay, what? Yeah. Oh, for the first three, not the first two. No, I got, I got you, so the only, I got you, so. Yeah? That's okay. So how do you use that? What's the point of that, right? What, what's a useful, 
how does this become a useful tool if you have a practice of meditating and you have a practice of practicing? So what, the 17, you might as well say 15, 20, 21. Does, does it matter to you? No. <laughs> if someone could actually perceive the differences, I can't. But if there were someone that, I assume someone must have been able to classify them. Right. So if you could perceive them, then you would know what floor you're on. It's a little bit easier to navigate, like if you overshot. Mm -hmm. But it's to me, it's not very practical because I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a map. You know, I mean, I had a conversation with this neuroscientist the other day about meditation. He studies people that meditate and blah, blah. We started talking about a phenomenon that I was seeing. And he's like, oh, yeah, a lot of people see that, you know. And, you know, and it's just kind of like there are certain levels that you go, and, and it's helpful to know and make you realize you're not crazy. Mm. It's walking your way through the labyrinth. I like what you said. And so people have done this. They've laid out the map, and it gives you some kind of, if you're practicing and you know, for, for example, I'll tell you how I practice this, there's no way I'm getting to any of those levels of one or in my meditation. I'm lucky to stay focused, right? So, but when I do get very focused, there is the knowledge and the study of this, there's an alarm bell that goes off when I'm overtly <coughs> zoning out in my meditation. Mm -hmm. Be, that's the, that's in, so in a <coughs> metaphorical sense, I know uh, my mind has like an alarm that says stay within this range. Yeah. It's also like the idea of um, like your mind creates your reality. So if you're saying like what is meditation and then your mind thinks okay this is what meditation is then you've already achieved it even though you don't feel like you've been there yet. So it's just like with this. If you know there's 17 sections but you haven't experienced them yet your mind can conceive of them so you can experience them. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a nice thing. Yeah. Good. Cool. Um, so that was good for, let's have a look at you went. Objects for a true level, yeah. Reaches the highest expression, you get all the ideas. So then we talked about class two, we talked about formless realm, five births, and I think it was four ways of being birthed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is that right? So let's, uh, let's talk about the formless realm first. What characterizes the formless realm. What kind of beings are there? Why are they beings? There's no, no more aggregates. No more this, right? How many heaps are there? Four. four. There's only four. No, right. one. There's oh, everything except, what the, except the physical one. Great. Yeah. Everything it's except the, the, the physical form. Right. Yeah? Formation, sensation, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. So the only one that's missing is form physical form. So what continues then? Why are you a being? Karma. I just remember you used up all your good karma, but I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's because you're having all these positive experiences yeah. like so quickly. Well, not necessarily like quickly, but you're using them. And then yeah, you're, you're being with. forced to have an experience. Like we're forced to have an experience now that's solid and true and real, and we, this is my reality. Just like my Monday night versus my Wednesday night, there is no way I could be exited from that. At that time, that was my solid reality. You are having blissful and virtuous experiences, which are a result. They're forced upon you because of your karma. You've had these, but because they are nice upon nice upon nice, you're using up stores and storehouse storehouses of virtue that when they get exhausted or you're left if you've got an infinite number of seeds all that's left is uh, negativity yeah but that's not where i was getting at i was um how would you conceive yourself as a being because this characterizes beings in the formless realm here i can say i'm, I'm hector i'm a person just mental energy just no body and mental energy. Mm -hmm. You still conceive of yourself as an I. As a, mm -hmm. you, yes, you have four out of the five heaps, but the continuum of person right. continues. The thing attaching itself to the me yeah, is the thing that characterizes beings here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, continuum of person, means being. Um, so, much more subtle levels of afflictions 
And how many di divisions do you remember? Well, um, I told you earlier. Yeah. Maybe you cover it in here. You said there's three. What's the difference between continu continuum of the person and life energy continuum? Yeah, I, the sense of being. The, the, the conception of a person is the sense of the I. Yeah, and I, I saw that in Geshe Michael's note, and the <coughs> way I interpret it, I'm not sure if that was clear. When he said the continuum of, of a being, which he connected it to karma, mm -hmm. was the idea that. You're right, still because when you're no longer creating karma. No, sorry, I just had it and I just lost it. Because you're still having results of karma <coughs> ripening. All this is still results of karma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, but in comparison to being a Buddha, which. You're not creating karma when you're a Buddha. You're not, not creating karma in the way that bad. we name it karma. Right. Yeah. Um, repeat so the words again, because the words might prompt me to. Life avoid. energy continuum. I was going to say that the thing, the continuum of a person is the grasping to the eye upon death. We learned that in ACO 4, I think, right? The, this idea of life energy continuum, when I read that from Geshe Lama, I imagined it was the Nirlangi cure, the projecting karma that gave you a sense of this lifetime. This, so for a period, I'm a human and you identify yourself as a human and through that period I have a sense of I. Okay. So that was the way I don't I'm not sure what he intended with that line, but that's what I got. That works. Yeah. Cool. What would be an uh, example of affliction in that of an affliction? In that realm. No, in, in that realm. In that realm. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really good thing. What they said is they are it, it was vague on the notes, yeah? But what I and this is Hector's interpretation of the notes, right? It's that you are misconceiving your world. And by nature, it's an affliction. Yeah. So you're, by mistakenly thinking that things are permanent, you, you, you are in samsara. You have ignorance. Yeah. So then you're shocked when it ends. And they say that the pain of that when, when the announcement is made that you're finishing in the next seven days or whatever it is. The attachment for such a long period of being mm -hmm. uh, get, gets, you get such a strong feeling that obviously the negative karma would come up and connect to that storehouse. This is the way I imagine it. Is this yeah. like the form realm where you're burning good karma? Yeah, both, both of them. Oh, because they, the only beings in the form of bonus realms are Davis and Asuras, yeah? And then they have this jealousy between them, and I can't remember if that's in the form or the form of this room. Yeah. But that's that's a really good question, because you, if you're blissed out, have, when, what do you have you know, to be? Because then if you're jealous, you're not blissed out. Is the debate there, right? Well, the ignorance is the affliction. And that's, yeah, that's what I what I think the answer is. What is the sense of self? The, the sense of person continue. Yeah. yeah. It's good, it's a good way, um, a, a good question, a good way of thinking about this. Yeah. And then lastly, there's four ways of being born. Do you remember that? Yeah. Egg. Egg is the worst, right? Right, because you hurt yourself and your it's, mother. You get hurt twice. You hurt yourself, you get hurt twice. Right. And your mother <laughs> once. <laughs> but only from the point of whether you're hurting beings is the worst. Because it's... Uh, go on then. C-section. What's the name of the first one where you just spontaneously combust? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're born complete. It says you're born complete. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I was born into Prometheus. Yeah, I, I put Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I can look at it there. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's have a look. I can tell you. Zuki. Born complete is. Hector. Yeah, Zuki Kewa. Yeah, so and now when you don't hurt anybody, you just pop into the air. That's it, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> fully clothed. <laughs> well, this is the, the bottom line of talking about the death and the wrongs. Remember, I said at the beginning, we're going to go dig deep at this uh, <coughs> explanation of all the different ways of being. 
yeah and you're supposed to not believe it for the sake of believing you're supposed to have questions to go if that's true what about this what about that and i think getting your mind in there i think it's got something to do with what rachel said that it begins shaping up a map where you can then place experiences into the map right is the map self-existent i think it's truly this way from their own side etc etc right so there's some magic from my perspective uh, in my experience for over 17 years of not believing half of this stuff and trying to work it out there's some magic that just getting informed about a certain way of doing things or a certain way of things in this tradition pops into a result later on in your practice mm -hmm. yeah so I have all these things on my shelf they're at the back of my mind as little alarm bells and as you progress through your practice of meditation and your practice in bodhicitta etc and wisdom you then it's a it's magical how these things that were laid out as an unbelievable map earlier become the only thing you can hold on to when the floor drops from under you and you're like oh i understand why this is here mm. yeah and i i've made the mistake to reject completely certain things with awareness that has made me uh, lose time in my practice i don't know if that's too vague for you but it, no, it really feels and then as you enter deeper and deeper teachings i can't tell you the subtlety about placing the water bowls and the few of the lineage messages around that the way you conceive of things as you do prostrations the very subtle way you handle it. Because it's all energy. It's everything we do. We are creating it with this. Yeah. So somebody Every has laid out a moment. complete experience that you must then burn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But without this imaginary ladder, you can't exit this room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's how I take this topic. It also gives us a, a it gives us a perceptual framework for later. Did you finish your first? Hmm? We didn't finish them. Let's do it. There's not hurting anyone talking to the world. Do you have a question? Kurt, just yourself. Which one is that? So how many births you got? Popping four, into existence four, as a complete being. Right. Warmth and moisture. Warmth and moisture, which are oh, mosquitoes that. and so on. Yeah, that's what you just got yourself, right? Egg. Egg. Egg and Kurt. And, and the womb, right. yeah? So the womb hurts Mom. you and your mother. Yeah. The, <laughs> the the I don't get warmth and moisture. The, the egg is three points. The warmth and moisture is just one point because you only hurt yeah. you. Warmth and moisture is just uh, I think in the Middle Ages, what did they call it? I mentioned it last week. Oh yeah. They had a name for it and it was spontaneous arising or something like that in the Middle Ages. And it's just in summer, all of a sudden, from all this water yeah, yeah, there's and moisture, dragonflies everywhere. Mini flies and mosquitoes pop out of nowhere. Yeah, it, but that's just misconception. We call it eggs. Yeah. Yeah. So there's only three. What? But it's a different kind of egg. Yeah. Why? It's because he perceived it in that way. So the Buddha. Yeah. Or are you talking about Vasubandhu? Yeah, I'm how talking do you about that. Like eggs don't hurt. The bug. The mother. The what? The bug. Well, I guess you could say fish because those are external, right? Yeah, there are other animals. They're still laid. No, they're it's internal. Still eggs. No, they lay them outside, and, and then, then they're the they're and then it's yeah. fertilized, but they're still going to expel them. But you're not in it yet because doesn't life start at the moment of yeah, conception? Oh, that's, that's lovely. Right. That's good. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you have to come to terms with in your mind and question it yourself. Well, I mean, if it's like somebody that's writing a book about what we should be studying, it should be absolutely right. It is absolutely right for when it was written and for the beings that got to hear it. And the way I take it is <clears throat> there are levels and levels of understanding. And there's a reason why it was written that way. And I might not understand it right now. Okay, so I'll and, study it. And it might have been uh, perfect for the beings of the time. 
that there's also something in that there's a difference in being there's born. There's a difference in that because, there, I mean, in the Abhya Dharma Kosha, they talk about like atoms and stuff. I don't think they would fuck up on warmth and moisture, the difference between that and an egg. Yeah, so they, it's just the name of saying that group of beings who are born from that process. Yeah. That's how I take it. I mean, it's all yeah. similar to the first one where you like just pop in. But it's different to the eggs that we have on land. I don't mean the eggs, I mean... The born complete. The born complete and the born from warmth and moisture are similar in terms of causation, except that the second one has warmth and moisture linked to the causation of the first one. There. It doesn't it's just a there. division of... Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can subdivide them and subdivide them and subdivide them. Yeah, it's just a grouping. Is that satisfying? No, but I will satisfy myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so let's, do you want to have a break and then yeah. we start the class? Let's do that and we'll come back at night. Yeah, great. And we'll talk about uh, class three. Thanks. Maybe it's making a point.